Hi friends, welcome back. So the Elon Musk Tesla drama continues as the CEO of Tesla keeps moving further and further away from Tesla. Uh, check this out. It says here, Elon Musk eyeing edge for Trump hires Republican political advisor. So basically Musk is building up a political team, right? Hiring uh, professional political operatives. Uh, the person he hired uh, used to work in big pharma stuff for Republicans and now essentially he's building a team. Uh, will Mr. Musk just want to run things behind the scenes? Or well, actually in front of the scenes, I guess you could say, uh, or will Mr. Musk, uh, Mr. Musk run for office someday? I always say, I think he may look at a, a Texas governor kind of thing. I, I wouldn't be shocked. Um, you know, would he, you know, be congressperson or senator? I think, I think Congress would be too low for him. So I would say governor of Texas or senator, um, you know, theoretically, if Musk ever to really dive into politics. Um, the other thing, too, is that uh, some people sometimes think that Musk can run for president. He can't. He was born in South Africa. You have to be a natural born citizen. So uh, there's that. But this is clear evidence that he's just interested in, in, in other things, not Tesla. Um, and then when he brings up Tesla, this is a, a, something on social media just recently. Someone asked the question, who would have guessed that SpaceX and uh, would beat Tesla to market uh, with ride hailing service? And Musk, you know, kind of make a joke, but I want to make a point on this though. But Musk responds, potential Tesla SpaceX collab, ride hailing works even if you're in space. Now, I read this as a joke, but 50 million people read it. And the, the problem is, is that you are the CEO of a publicly traded company, right? And sometimes your jokes, meaning like, ha ha ha, I'm gonna buy Twitter. Sometimes those things become real and the dude buys Twitter, right? So <laughs> you guys understand what I'm saying there. Or, or for example, or sometimes you make jokes about, you know, pumping up Shiba Inu and then Shiba Inu pumps up. So, you know, any kind of like hint that there's a, a Tesla SpaceX collab, I'm sure the Tesla, you know, stock promoters will be like, oh my God, guys, look, 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 evidence of, the, of, a, of a, you know, collaboration. And so I hope you guys understand this is the uh, sort of, you know, you have to uh, be very, very careful about the things that you say as a CEO of a publicly traded company. And I'll let you guys read that as you like. Uh, Musk is also tweeting about like, you know, this is just 18 minutes ago about surveillance and liberty, this kind of stuff. I mean, it's not really about Tesla. And he's tweeting out this weird stuff. This was a couple days ago. And it gave me a couple, I had to think about this for a couple of days to process this one. Uh, so basically you can see here, this is from Musk. Corporate needs you to find the difference between these two pictures. And again, he's referring to X slash Twitter, not Tesla. It's all, all his whole focus is on politics and, and other companies. It's not Tesla. Um, and you can see here, it's a picture of North Korea, you know, Kim Jong-un and Mr. Musk. And I guess, and it was kind of funny. I was like, okay, so do they look similar? Is that what the joke is? And then I thought about it more. And, and this is kind of my thinking. And, and this is just pure speculation. I want to hear his thoughts. And I was thinking, okay, maybe from, you know, Musk, uh, uh, you know, internal numbers at X Twitter, they're getting a lot of, you know, users from <laughs> Russia or North Korea or something like that. And they're trying to, you know, figure out why suddenly is North Korea trending and why is Musk trending at the same time as North Korea? And I was thinking it's not necessarily that they look alike, just maybe the, you know, bots and the users are coming from those parts of the world. So that's just something I was thinking about and wonder if you guys think that as well. Um, more crazy news. Um, this was actually a police story. So um, if you're a Tesla stock promoter, you always say, guys, 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 you know, police departments around the country are buying Teslas to work as police vehicles. And you can read the headline here, Tesla gets its first negative review from a police force standpoint. So this was actually a really interesting one. So I'm not a police officer, uh, you know, so I, I haven't thought about these kind of things as a police officer, but when I read through it, I was, it kind of made sense. So basically just it was, it, um, it cost more to, I guess, retrofit a, a, a Tesla Y, opposed to say like the Ford, um, this is a, uh, I think this is like a, a, what do you call this thing? You guys can tell me, it's, it's with the Ford SUV hybrid. Um, I just, I, the, the name of it's escaping my, <laughs> please type in the comments which one this is, I, I just forget. Um, but um, the idea though is do you want like this bigger car or do you want this smaller car, right? And the police were saying, you know, our equipment, we need something bigger, especially the back seat. Uh, like if we want to put vests in the thing or any number of things that police have to put back there, it doesn't really fit that well. And then if you want to detain someone, this vehicle also doesn't work that well. Um, it was interesting because I was thinking about this was like, you know, looking about this stuff, this would be much easier to detain someone in this vehicle. The other thing too they mentioned is um, if you uh, are training another police officer, have a partner, uh, and it was, I, I, that I didn't realize. I always thought all police officers drive around with partners. I, I just thought so, but I'm stupid. <laughs> um, again, I'm not a police officer. I haven't thought about this, but I'm sure there's situations where they're solo in a car and there's other situations where they have a partner and you guys can comment on that. But basically, if, if you have a partner in the car, um, they were saying like the Tesla Y, because you got to put all this other equipment in there, like your screen and stuff like that. 
the passenger seat is just not that comfortable for that. And um, it was interesting though to hear this stuff because again, I'm not a police officer. It's just fascinating to hear what they said. Um, the other gist of it, and I'll read the details, but is that the um, because many of the things in the Tesla are automated, it doesn't work great for a police situation. We need to have your car react quickly. So we'll read it here. They call it the smart car challenges. And again, this is from the police officer perspective. It says the Menlo Park uh, PD listed autopilot interference lighting controls and proximity lock sleep mode and self-closing doors as disadvantages right so think about a situation where like as a police officer you don't necessarily want the door to be closed at all times sometimes you want to leave it open for any number of reasons right you guys watch police movies you guys know what i'm saying you're going to leave the door open you're going to use it for cover you want to leave the door open you're trying to get someone in the car or whatever like let's say you're trying to detain someone throw them in the car and the door shuts on the back there whatever you guys you understand what i'm saying you don't want everything to be auto all the time so that they say here for example Autopilot interference. There is delay, a delay, when officers shift into drive, and on occasion the Teslas automatically stop when an officer attempts to pull off to the side of the road to approach vehicles or people. So again, manual controls is where you don't want any sort of auto thing. You want to be able to like, you know, do exactly what you want to do when you want to do it. Here's another thing. A uh, lighting controls. Tesla does not allow direct access, so no direct access to the system. I'm talking about lighting. Officers need to use multi-step touchscreens process to follow standard practices to dim their lights upon approach at night. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, as a police vehicle, right? Uh, if you want to, you know, go in at dark, you know, turn the lights off and then kind of sneak right in. Cause it is, it, now, now, in terms of like a pro for, uh, say, a Tesla, electric cars are very, very quiet. So I think that would be useful for police cars. But yes, I, I think in the situation you want would want manual control of your lights. Um, proximity locking, sleep mode and self-closing doors. The car knows when the key is or is not present uh, within an effective range, right? So is the key close to the car or not? The cars will not lock if the key or enabled smartphone are near the vehicles and uh, conversely lock if the key or smartphone is away from the vehicle. Yeah, so I, there's any number of, of, of reasons why you'd want to lock the door quickly and not lock the door, et cetera. And then the way that the car works right now, it's dependent on where the key is. So I thought that was really interesting stuff, guys. I don't, I'm not a police officer, so I never thought about those things before. Um, but but the, this is the kind of like crazy news you find about Tesla all the time. And and um, here's another one. Demand, this is JD Power. They're just saying demand overall in the USA uh, is going down for EVs. Um, they basically had to revise their earlier projections. Because before, you know, when everyone's buying EVs, electric vehicles, like, oh yeah, it's going to grow forever, whatever. But um, now that they're in hands of consumers, maybe not so much. It, it could be one of two things, right? So, and, and it depends on your situation. One, are you just not buying EV because you think they're too expensive? Or two, are you not buying EV just because you want hybrid, right? And and it just depends on your situation. Um, but yes, the essentially fit sales forecasts are going down. Um, JD Power does think uh, sales, uh, EVs will go up by 2030, but they could always downward revise that. I think they were predicting, um, and I'll, I'll give you guys some numbers here, um, it's like, for example, here it says, I'll just give you guys some hard numbers if you're curious on this stuff. It says mainstream car buyers continue to shun electric vehicles. Automo Research said Wednesday that battery powered vehicles will, will account for just 9% of sales uh, in the US this year, down from the previous 12.4. So I was telling you guys about. And then um, and then they were saying like, you know, Ford's getting out of the EV stuff. They're not doing so much canceling stuff. Volkswagen's, you know, slowing down because the money's not there. It's not worth building these things. Um, and then they were saying, this is where on the positive note, they were saying, um, JD Power shows that EV sales were 7.6 of, of vehicle sales last year. Research said it sees EVs accounting for 36% of, e of US sales by 2030. I'll let you guys be the judge of that. I mean, that's so the question would be five years from now, do you think a third of all vehicles are going to be electric on the road? Who knows, right? I, I, I can't predict that far ahead and, and we'll see. Um, but what I can say though, I can say what's happening today, um, there's more competition on the road. Uh, Xpeng. Uh, I mean, you can see here they're releasing a vehicle that I guess is going to be under 20,000. Uh, this is an electric vehicle. Um, if you follow my channel, we just drove. Uh, it's not an Xpeng. Xpeng is a Chinese vehicle. We drove um, uh, Kia, Kia EV3. Uh, you can find my review on the channel. Um, and uh, it, the, there's going to be a lot more competition. Now, uh, Kia, I think they're going to more like 35-ish. So these Xpengs at 20, though. But this is for the Chinese market. Um, if it were to come to the U.S. market or otherwise, uh, I think the cost would probably be higher. Um, this was interesting though, just to give you an idea. It says the basic version of the, this talking about the uh, Xpeng's car is um, 119,000 uh, yuan, right? So that's Chinese currency. Um, and then you compare that to the Tesla, uh, that one is 231. So like the Tesla's coming in at double the price of this new Xpeng. So, you know, 
I, I can't speak to the quality of the X-Ping. I, I just can't, but I can just say from a consumer standpoint, this is a mass market car. It's coming in, you know, much cheaper than the Tesla's. And, you know, what's if you're looking to get into a car just in, in general, and this thing seems to work fine, and you don't need all these automatic bells and whistles, and, you know, the police don't want, want all the automatic bells and whistles, um, you know, this could spell doom for Tesla. They're already losing market share. And you can actually see it in, in Tesla's actions. Um, this is a, just came out a couple of days ago. Uh, they're extending their 0% financing for their vehicles in China, right? And so that basically is going to hit your margins. Um, I mean, I, I understand, guys, that, that you know, you have all these cars sitting in the lots and, and or in the storage. You got to get them, you know, out to people because you can't just have them sit there with, with uh, you know, bugs growing, uh, crawling around in these things and, and grass growing up them because <laughs> we've seen reports where they're just sitting in fields. Um, and so, you know, you, they got a real demand problem over there. Uh, moreover, I mean, this is all this stuff just keeps coming out. And, and this is, you know, this is just reality. And I understand if, if you're a fan of Tesla, you think, oh, this is just mainstream media just making up stuff all the time. They just hate Elon Musk and Tesla. No, they just they just report the truth, guys. People, people, you know, don't necessarily believe that full self-driving is going to work, even though I understand on YouTube that the if you guys don't know this, um, when the YouTubers release videos, etc., cetera, um, Tesla actually preferences uh, them. So the engineers work extra hard uh, for someone who does social media work to make sure that their car works and make sure that, you know, it's, uh, what's our word to say it, following the sort of course <laughs> that they have. And, and this is something that um, it came from internally from insiders saying, yeah, as, as engineers spend extra time on the experience of either Elon Musk or Tesla YouTubers. Um, but guys, I, I, I try to look at everything that I possibly can. And so that's why I mentioned this, you know, political thing where it's like it shows where Elon Musk priorities are. And I understand that, you know, if you listen and believe everything Elon Musk says, you would say, oh, guys, but it's not really about cars. Don't worry that cars are, are slowing down. We've got a new shiny object and that shiny object is, is robots. And, and, you know, Elon Musk says it's going to make Tesla a $25 trillion company. It's like, oh, my God, <laughs> 25 trillion, right? Like more than half of the S&P 500. Oh, yeah. Tesla's going to be like so awesome. And then when they have a, you know, this thing in, in China, which I talked about before on the channel, like it's a robot conference and they got all these other robots running around doing robot stuff and Tesla's robot sitting in a glass case, like doing nothing. It just, it looks bad. And, and the, the thing is that's so sad about this stuff is when I show you guys like all this stuff, right? Competition, what is demand? Look at Tesla's action, look at the action of the CEO, right? Not focus on Tesla. I mean, the, the, to me, the picture is obvious. Um, and then you see like just actual just reviews from a police officer, which also seem pretty reasonable. I understand what police are saying. It all is obvious to me, but I, I think what happens with people is they they get so entrenched into this, you know, Tesla stock promotion world. Um, and, and also to you're down your money. So you're like really stressing out all the time. Like, when's my money coming back? When's my coming back uh, money coming back? I hate to break it to you guys. It just it doesn't look good. It, I mean, it's, it's obvious. It just doesn't look good. Now, this was an interesting one. I mentioned this before. And I want to bring it up again. Um, so uh, Canada is raising their tariffs on Chinese uh, made vehicles. And it turns out that hurts Tesla because uh, the, I guess the cars that go to uh, Canada are com coming from the uh, Shanghai factory. So um, that was I, I, I can't answer why. I, I just don't know because I, I thought that was interesting because I, I know they make some Teslas in the USA. So why not just ship them north? Who knows? Ask Tesla. But evidently, um, Canada gets one from Shanghai. And if you guys are in Canada, you guys can let me know if you have any details about this kind of thing. But this is this is interesting, and that, and that certainly hurts Tesla for those who uh, want to drive that in Canada. And you got this. I mean, the hits just keep on and coming. Correct, guys, I really know. <laughs> I, I check all this stuff every day. Um, so the, the Consumer Reports, this is um, August 27, 2024. Uh, they just came out with something like, okay, which which you know used cars should you get for reliability? Um, and, and actually, before I show you, uh, just kind of, you know, think to yourself, which is the most reliable used car? Which brands do you rely on? I already have my answer. I want to hear your answers. I'll show you the, uh, the from um, Consumer Reports. So number one is Lexus. Number two is Toyota. Number three is Mazda. Number four is Acura. Number five is Honda. So that's the top five. You, you probably notice a pattern there. Japanese cars are made pretty well. Um, then you got Buick, BMW, etc. Um, you can look at the full list. But then Tesla is down at the very bottom at number 24, uh, just ahead of Dodge and Chrysler. So not great for used cars. It, it, it's, it's, it's obvious, guys, what's happening here. You know, I mean, I, I just show you this stuff, you know, because I want you to just, just live in reality. And, and for me, um, I find it fun because you sort of have the disconnect of what happens in, in sort of reality. And then how, how can the Tesla stock promoters, how can they, you know, sort of 
twist this reality to make it sound good. Like here's another one. Tesla self-driving is still not working in the boring company one way. Tunnels can't even work there. And they had some sort of issue too where um, I, I guess uh, I'll read the headline. Tesla rivals still can't use its superchargers. I guess there was some sort of promise that Tesla made to where like, you know, Ford and, and other companies or, and Rivian can use their chargers. But um, I think Tesla's understaffed or something uh, because they, they haven't sent out enough adapters to allow people to use it or whatever, right? And, um, you know, I want to point this out. This is Elon Musk. This is him. Um, the emperor has no clothes. Some people think he's like God or something like that, but that's that's Mr. Elon um, when, when, you know, busy twitty fingers and, and you could argue who is internet troll number one or number two is Elon internet troll number one or is Trump internet troll number one? <laughs> I think Elon's giving uh, Trump a run for his money, but this is, this is what they're doing. This is what they are. They're out drinking all the time and uh, tweeting up a storm. Um, that's Elon. And, you know, I think Elon is also having mental breakdowns because um, the Telegram CEO got arrested in France and I was reading through the stuff and it's, it is like all kinds of charges because essentially, you know, when you're, when you're Telegram, all kinds of people can use this thing. You say free speech for everyone, but the problem is what if um, you're doing crimes against children? What if you're doing, you know, drug related crimes? What if you're doing money related crimes? All kinds of stuff can happen on Telegram the same way all kinds of stuff can happen on Twitter. And then it kind of fits in. If you're Mr. Musk, you're like, you know what? I need to protect my downside. <laughs> I need to uh, get into politics and start getting those pardons uh, going. And uh, that's what's up. So guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on any one of these things. And before I go, don't forget, uh, Elon Musk is even, I guess, poisoning Memphis with his XAI. <laughs> I know there's always, there's always something. <laughs> but um, I want to hear your thoughts on any one of these things. And uh, I'll catch you all in the next video.